my favorite aspects of the Drakengard and Nier games are the weapon stories. I don't know about you, but I personally think they are an underappreciated part of the series. For those of you unfamiliar with the concept of weapon stories, you can inspect weapons you collect and get basic information about their attack values. You can also read information about the weapon. It is a little different when compared to other games that give weapon descriptions. Upon receiving a weapon, you get the first piece of the weapon story. Then you get each new piece of the story every time you level up the weapon, reaching a total of 4 entries. Weapon stories have been a feature in every game of the series except for the original 2010 release of Nier. It was cut from the game, but the weapon stories were written into Grimoire Nier. Thankfully, they were rewritten for Replicant version 1.2247, with slight differences from the stories in Grimoire Nier. Most of the weapons found in Nier originated from the world of Drakengard. The fan theory is that when Kaim and Angelus were blown out of the sky, all of the weapons Kaim had collected were scattered around the area, leaving them to be found by Nier thousands of years later. For the weapons found in Drakengard and Replicant, some stories are closely related to each other. One of my favorite weapon stories is for the Fang of Twins. In Drakengard, the weapon story tells the tale of two twin gods that cause destruction to a village without a care for anything. To end the destruction, members of the village decided to make a sacrifice, beheading a young twin brother and sister with their souls being trapped into the weapon itself. In Replicant, the weapon story takes place from the perspective of the brother, his love for his twin sister, and how they have been together since birth. The only time they were separated is when his dad cut off his head, and his mom did the same to his sister. The boy was happy knowing that their blood was mushed together into a single axe, where they remained together forever. The weapon story does become a little more twisted in Automata, especially when you reach level 3 with it. The twins begin to tease each other, with one of them copying the other's words. But whoever is telling the story, no longer wants to be stuck with their sibling, saying, someone separate us. Oh god, please, someone help me. Iron Will has an interesting weapon story across the series. In Drakengard, the sword's wielder becomes careless and develops a huge thirst for killing. The wielder becomes so bloodthirsty, the sword itself begins to have a mind of its own, always wanting to kill. In Replicant, the weapon story tells about how the weapon is filled with rage, glamouring about its iron will. While in Drakengard 3, the weapon progressively repeats the words iron, kill, meat, and blood, with the belief that the wielder's soul is still inside the weapon, wanting to escape and become human again. Ancient Overlord tells the tale of a king with a black sword, ruling his empire that thrived and prospered, but the empire spoiled their wealth and prosperity. Falling into corruption and depravity, the powerless king summoned a wicked god into the blade of his sword. He then began to murder his treacherous vassals, one after another. The god reveled in the bloodbath, and then the king was the last one alive. The sword slew him as well, dyeing the silver blade with royal blood. In Replicant, the story mentioned how the sword had been passed down in a prodigious kingdom that prospered for generations. The crystal embedded upon the sword had great magic. Should the blade absorb the blood of 10,000 people, the sword would glow bright red and the wielder would be granted immortality. One day, the queen lost her life in a tragic accident when she was pregnant. The king was distraught with grief, knowing his royal bloodline would end with him. To continue his kingdom's legacy, he decided to use the blade to gain immortality. He cut down any and all subordinates or citizens unlucky enough to cross his path. He shouted, If I am the final king, then the kingdom survives so long as I live. After killing thousands of his citizens, the crystal was nearly full when he died of a heart attack. But if he had killed the pregnant woman and unborn child that were in front of him before his death, he would have taken exactly 10,000 lives. In Automata, a young girl's village was sacked by bandits. To protect her family, she took her father's dagger and killed one of the bandits. 
Her family was shocked to see this, but the bandits fled and never returned. The girl never aged. The family she protected grew old, but not her. Other villagers began to shun her. With no one to turn to, she left her village to visit many strange lands, growing her skills and fame as a master sword fighter. Eternal life, a powerful weapon, and boundless experience. She used these talents to become queen of a nation, but she still had emptiness in her life, desiring the kindness her family denied her after she saved them from the bandits. There's still plenty of weapons across the series I could discuss, but I don't want to make this video any longer than my usual videos. However, if you enjoy these discussions about weapon stories, I could make longer or multiple videos about the other weapons in the series. Let me know down in the comments. Take care, and I'll see you soon.